OK, so I'm supposed to go later, but uh, as we're rescheduling things quickly, what I want to do is just give you um, a very brief introduction to some of the hands-on things that you can do this afternoon. So if you're going to uh, Decatur for the uh, off-site event, um, we've organized about a, roughly 13 uh, activities that you can do um, that range from a big sculpture to small paper things you can make and take home with you. Um, they're all kind of experiments, uh, so go into them with the, the spirit of kind of uh, fun excitement of, of creating something mathematical. Um, so I'm just going to go through a number of people here in uh, alphabetic order. Uh, Dick Esterly has designed a sculpture. He calls it the Cosmic Pop. Uh, it's made of circles. It's made of wood. They're laser cut. They're going to screw together. Uh, it's something of a geometric challenge, how it goes together. Um, you'll sort of learn the sculpture's form by building it. Um, he has pieces that look like this. They screw together. There's six different rings, and they make an interesting tangle. Um, he also has a paper activity uh, to take some strips of paper and make this shape. You may know this as uh, the shape of a spectacular ball. It's a kind of a, a sports ball. Um, it's a weave that corresponds to the kind of equators of mycosahedron or dodecahedron. Um, and a number of our activities have a big sculpture and also a paper version. Um, Kein Goodman Strauss and Eugene Sargent have designed a really big sculpture. This is quite an experiment. Um, it's modeled after a surface of uh, constant negative curvature, kind of a, a kale or underwater sea form that grows on the edge faster than it should. So as it grows, the edge has to keep wiggling around. And you eventually can't embed it in three space, but uh, you can try. And they've machined really big pieces of foam. They're going to snap together um, edge to edge. And this hasn't been built. So you'll be part of like the first people ever to see whether or not this actually works or not. So please make it work. Um, and uh, they also have a paper activity. This is a version you can then do at home. Um, I first learned this from Bill Thurston, but you can take sort of arcs of a circle and glue them together. And because the outer edge is longer than the inner edge, uh, it ends up doing this kind of curvy kale-like thing. Um, so do that too. Uh, Gwen Fisher, uh, you may have heard her talk yesterday. Uh, she has a couple of beading activities uh, that create these wonderful, beautiful forms. Uh, she also has some she'll show you uh, just by hand. Take a look at them, even if you don't do the beading activity. Uh, it's really a packing of rhombuses um, in, in a beautiful way. And she'll teach you the ins and outs of where the string goes. Uh, she has a couple of uh, designs of that sort. And a handout, even if you don't get a chance to do it, you might uh, grab her handout uh, if you want to go back and do it at home. Um, I have a sculpture. Um, I, my names are always sort of tentative, but for the moment it's called Eddie. So you can help me build Eddie. Um, I think it's about this big. It's made of laser cut wood pieces that join together by cable ties um, and just come. And like many of the activities, you might just come for a few minutes, be part of it, and then go off and do another activity uh, to sort of sample all the different things. Um, Elizabeth Heathfield uh, will guide you in building a giant catenary arch that you can walk through. This is a, a beautiful structure inspired by uh, the arch in St. Louis. Um, it's about six and a half or seven feet tall. So after you build it, it's made of laser cut wood pieces joined uh, again with cable ties. Uh, be sure and get a photo op. It'll be a good uh, Instagram picture or whatever it is that people do on the internet. Um, there's a couple of things by Paul Hildebrandt. Um, he has this wonderful sculpture I hope you've seen outside. It's sort of a zone tool structure, blown large. Um, he's building, I believe, as we speak, uh, another sculpture um, out in near the site. I don't know exactly where, it's, um, but uh, you'll be able to see that. So this is something that they're building now. Uh, and he'll explain. And then they have a hands-on activity that goes with that uh, using Zome Tool. They have several tables full of this Zome Tool material. If you've never played with it, it's a really wonderful 3D construction toy. Um, and they'll maybe doing something with rhombuses and higher dimensional tessellations and how they shadow uh, to give you uh, beautiful things. So, it, but you can also make anything you like. It's a wonderful construction set. Um, Akio Huzume talked uh, yesterday, and he showed you a little bit of what he's doing. Um, but he has pieces to make a beautiful, tall sculpture that uh, should make wonderful lights on the ceiling of the tent. And unless it's a sunny day, uh, we'll find out how that works. Um, and he also has a paper activity I think he uh, showed a picture of that you can build or cut out the pieces and fold it um, to make a kind of a, an aperiodic uh, spiral. And there's a, a cone version of that and a cylinder version of that. Um, John Jesperson, this is an interesting case. So he made this sculpture pieces, and he packed them carefully in a suitcase and flew over here. 
and then the airline forgot to bring the suitcase with him. So as of this morning, the latest report is they found the suitcase with all the pieces, and it will be here in maybe three or four or something hours. So this might just make it or not. So this is kind of an exciting thing. We're all going to be rooting for Bjarne uh, that these pieces will come. And they go together. They make a sculpture, which is a kind of a cube. So it doesn't look like a cube. Uh, but topologically, you'll see that there are these eight vertices that are each threefold, and they connect in the topology of a cube. Uh, but geometrically, it's different. So you can experiment with that and enjoy that. He also has a paper construction, laser-cut triangles. Uh, they go together. It's a tricky puzzle. It's much harder than it looks. They just slide together, but they make uh, a variant of the compound of eight octahedra uh, in five different colors if you feel strong, or you can just do it monochrome and not have to worry about the color pattern. Uh, but again, it's, a, it's an activity you can make, um, assuming they're the plain <laughs> luggage shows, um, and uh, then reproduce at home very easily if you're looking for activities of that sort. Um, Lefteref Pavlidis has a structure, he calls it an elastegrity, uh, but descriptively it's a transforming paper construction. It's a polyhedral construction that you can fold. He has laser cut pieces. Uh, it folds up, it goes together, uh, and then it transforms, it folds in wonderful ways. Uh, play with that, you'll enjoy making one of those and, and taking it home as well. Um, Renus Roloffs has uh, a large sculpture. This is made of laser cut wood, it slides together. Uh, you can see this sort of a uh, dodecahedron is hidden inside there. It expands, and it, um, it'll be fun to do, and uh, another great group project. And to go along with that, he's also made uh, a paper construction. Uh, it's a laser-cut thing. You can fold it up. It's, it's basically a cube octahedron with little tabs and pockets. But then each of these modules becomes uh, something that you can, as a group, uh, build something fun together. Uh, and I think finally, the last one here, uh, Ann Schwartz has designed a hexaflexagon. Uh, so Martin Gardner you know, got known to the world for his original column on, on hexaflexagons, at least to the math world. Um, and uh, this is a hexaflexagon. If you've never made one, here's your chance, or, or pick up a template. Uh, but it folds together, and you can find the different sides of it. Um, and I think that's uh, the basic the activities. There may be a few other uh, random things going on as well that you can find that might just kind of pop up activities for a part of the time or sharing some of the tables. Um, so forget what this says about buses leaving now. Do not leave and get on any buses. They don't exist. Um, but you may want to know, uh, the last bus is supposed to return around 10.30. There will be buses back and forth during the day. I don't know the logistics of all that. Um, but the uh, alternative way to get there and back is you can just take MARTA. It's, uh, it's a fairly fast 20-minute ride. You have to change at five points. Um, head to the Decatur station um, or just look on your phone for the different trains gallery. We're right near the different trains gallery. Um, the rough schedule for after you get there is that there's a barbecue lunch starting around 12. That'll peter out sometime by 2. They'll rearrange tables a bit. Uh, these sculpture construction activities will be going on uh, throughout from 2.30 to 5.30. They may be more intense at different times, so feel free to sample them, you know, see one, see another, um, or stay all the time uh, as you like. Um, Ron Lancaster will be doing a math walk. We don't know exactly when that is, but someone knows, don't worry. That, that, and uh, that'll take you around uh, to interesting things, and Ron will describe some of the mathematical uh, aspects of what you see. Um, there's going to be an MC Escher uh, exhibit at the Different Trains uh, Art Gallery. Uh, there's a happy hour at the Color Wheel Art Studio, which is right there at the same spot. Uh, Doris Schatzschneider is giving a lecture at 8 o'clock nearby. The details for all this, written by people who actually know the details, are in a program that you will get somewhere between here and there. I don't know that either, but read the program and it'll know all the true facts. Um, and that's the gist of what's going on. I don't know where we are um, time-wise. We're done. Okay. Thank you. Have fun. Yeah.